In this video, we'll talk about telomere replication. So telomere is present at the ends of the chromosome and it's a specialized structure found in the eukaryotic chromosomes. Replicating the DNA at the telomere region is quite challenging. In a moment, we would learn why it is so challenging and how this challenge is overcome by a eukaryotic cell. So this is the end of the chromosome and during the normal round of DNA replication, the enzyme that copy the DNA could not copy the extreme end of the chromosome. So let us try to delve into details and understand this process. So here you can see the leading and the lagging strand synthesis. Eventually the synthesis is now reaching the end of the DNA, the end of the chromosome. So the leading strand is synthesized properly in five prime to three prime direction. And lagging strand is basically synthesized in a discontinuous ma ma manner, like a stitching back mechanism. So first you have to have a RNA primer marked here in yellow. And then that primer has to be extended into a five prime to three prime direction. Now let's say there is the extreme three prime hydroxyl end. And you eventually imagine a primer is uh, attached at the extreme end. So obviously there would be a synthesis of the DNA in the five prime to three prime direction. But here is the problem. You can see the primers which are attached, which are marked here in yellow would be removed eventually and replaced by the DNA strands. Now, obviously these primers that are present in the extreme end cannot get replaced because the problem is while this primer replacement happens, a three prime OH is required to extend. But where would be the free three prime OH in the extreme end? That is why the end of the chromosome doesn't have the leverage to replicate its end. So he, this is known as the end replication problem. Now, how this end replication problem is solved with the help of telomerase. Telomerase is an enzyme which has protein subunits and RNA component. So here is the RNA component, which plays a crucial role in telomere replication. In a moment, it will be clear. And here is a third subunit, which is basically telomerase reverse transcriptase subunit. So basically telomere is a enzyme of reverse transcriptase category. It can form DNA strands and basically it doesn't need an external template. So the template that it uses is basically endogenous. You can see the RNA components serve as the template and it has an independent poly polymerase activity. So here is the end of the chromosome. Here you can see the blue strand is the lagging strand and it has to be extended. Otherwise there would be problem. So the telomeres sit in the end of these strand and there is a specific sequence in the telomerase in the RNA, which is conserved across eukaryotes. And this sequence is generally this one, AAU, triple C, double A, U, C. And it binds to the end of the DNA. And then it starts synthesizing and extending the end. One, once this is done, the telomerase would disengage and start this process again. So the extension would happen. So there would be repetitive addition in the end of these chromosome. So after a few cycles, there would be an overhang which is created. Eventually, the telomerase would be disengaging and there are other polymerase which would basically be engaging there such as TNA pol alpha and then the other strand would be synthesized. So this is how the overall telomere shortening problem is solved. Now question is how telomerase length is regulated. At this point, we have to understand how telomerase know how much to extend the telomere. It doesn't do it too short. It doesn't do it too long. So how this process is regulated. 
Latest research from East suggests that there are several telomere binding protein which can regulate the telomerase activity. Such proteins are RAP1, RIF1 and RIF2. They form a complex together and can potentially inhibit the telomerase activity. Now imagine two scenarios. In one scenario, the telomere length is quite short. In the right hand scenario, the telomere length is quite long. So this particular protein binds to the double stranded DNA. So when the telomere length is too long, there are too many enzyme complexes that bind there. And if there are so many telomere binding protein, it would inhibit or pose a strong inhibition on the telomerase. So it would block the telomerase activity. So here is the short length. It would pose a less telomere binding protein and less telomere binding would have less inhibition. So elongation of the telomere region would happen. But imagine a situation when there are the telomere length is long then there would be more telomere binding proteins binding to that length then there would be very strong inhibition so elongation would be prevented this is how a fine tuning between the length of the telomere is maintained in the eukaryotic scenario now the end of the telomere has slight overhang at the three prime end now the problem is this kind of overhang can be treated as potential dna break by the dna repair machinery in the cell now, this is something the cell doesn't want. So how this problem is overcome? So the solution of the problem is pretty simple. Fold it such that the machinery cannot recognize it. So the folding happens gradually and sequentially in a stepwise fashion. So you can see first a looping mechanism tucks the uh, overhang inside. And there, there is a strand invasion process which forms a loop-like structure known as T-loop. Now this T-loop acts as a protective cap for the end of the linear chromosome. And it prevents the telomeric DNA overhang to be recognized by the double strand DNA break machinery. And that is how the telomere is protected from A, any kind of exonucleus activity, or B, any kind of DNA damage response uh, activity. Now the problem with telomere is telomere shortening happens with each subsequent cell division. Telomeres naturally sh shorten with each cell division due to the end replication problem. Even if there is a regulatory mechanism which ensures telomere length should be regulated but still there is a shortening of the telomere. Now the problem is people think that these progressive shortening of the telomere is one of the key reason why cells undergo a process known as replicative senescence. Now replicative senescence is a cellular state, a situation where cells fail to replicate their DNA. The growth and the division capability is totally abrogated. Cell has reached a sen senescence uh, stage and this is thought to be the key driver for cellular aging. Now the question is if this particular telomere shortening can be reversed then one might find the youth fountain. But the problem lies there as well. It turns out there are cells which can prevent any kind of telomere shortening and can sort of have a fixed length of the telomere. telomere. And these cells are none other than the cancer cells. Most of the cancer cells have the ability to divide rapidly and uncontrollably. So obviously if they divide so many times, one would expect the telomere length to be very short progressively in division. But it turns out that cancer cell has fairly uh, constant length of the telomere. Now the big question is how cancer cells can actually uh, make, maintain their length over so many cell divisions. So one side telomere shortening is associated with aging. Another side keeping the telomere length cons consistent is associated with cancer. So how the telomere length is regulated and telomere replication would take place is a mystery still nowadays. And it's important to understand this concept to have a better outlook into these uh, cellular scenarios. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow our Instagram page. You can follow our all social media links provided in the description. You can uh, support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. See you in the next video.